and welcome back to my channel for a card making tutorial. This is Marla with Mad About Cards and Crafts and I'm so excited you're joining me. Here's a look at the dreamy tropical card that we are going to create using Lindy Stamp Gang Magicals and Scrappy Tail Crafts products. I bought these last year. This is the Parrot which is a beautiful layering die. And I also purchased this layered hibiscus and I did not use either of those products last year. We're moving into summer and so I thought now was the perfect time for me to break these out. There are solid and outline pieces and then there are center pieces for that hibiscus flower. Lots of beautiful layers. I'll be using the tropical leaves. I'm not using that last one that I'm pointing at. I used the one underneath it but I'll be using two of the leaves from that set. I have this beautiful A2 triangle pattern cover plate that I'll be using and then I'm going to use these alphas from the slim alphabet die and this is from the greetery. Here's a look at the magical colors that we'll be using. I'll also have them up on the screen. This was a new pack that I purchased. I'm going to start with the umbrella drink pink which is a vibrant beautiful pink color. These are all very summery color combinations. I'll use Nanette purple popsicle and I'm using a dry fan brush for this so I'm just sprinkling it onto my glass mat. We are going to do a little bit of smushing. The difference between smushing on your glass mat if you saw Tim Holtz video the other day and smushing on a silicone pad would be that you're not going to get the water droplets you're going to get more of a um, kind of kind of a smoother finish with this one but I'm doing some light tapping and you can see the intense color that I'm getting. This is accent opaque cardstock and I do um, add water to my panels before I add them to the ink. For the second one you can see how much lighter that was because I already had water in the um, additional water in those magicals from the first smooshing. It gave me a much lighter impression. We're going to move on to our blue and we have this beautiful beach ball blue. I'm going to spritz it with water and I went in here with a dry panel and you can see how much more intense that color was again. Now the ink has been watered down a bit and you'll see how much lighter it is on the second panel. Because I had so much more on my desk I went ahead and just um, tried to soak it up with this third piece of white cardstock. I dry in between each each of my applications because I am doing layering. If I chose not to dry in between the applications, the colors would meld together or muddy together if the colors were not complementary. By drying in between your applications, you're going to get more of a layering effect, more intensity of color, and you're going to be able to differentiate on your panel the different colors that you use instead of creating new ones. We're going to to add teal now and this is called dip a toe teal. Again a dry fan brush spritzing it with water. I have a dry panel. I haven't added uh, any water to the panel and I'm just dipping it or smushing it into the ink that's on my glass mat. This panel I added water to it before I did my dipping and you can see that I really didn't get the intensity I was looking for. So I'm going to show you a second method. I have a wet uh, panel so I do have that water on that panel and I'm tapping the teal on it. I'll add it, uh, I'll spritz it, excuse me, with a little bit more water to get that pigment moving. And then for this one I'm going to do the same thing except this time I'm going to add more of the pink so the umbrella drink pink. You can see that I have that beautiful purple but I lost some of that intense pink and I wanted to add it back in. Now some of the pigment wasn't moving right there. You can use a paintbrush for that. Instead I chose to get my fingers inky. I'm not afraid of ink, getting ink on my fingers. And then there's a look at all three of the panels 
panels that we've created. I'm going to add some water spatters on there, so I'm just clapping over the top. I just put a little bit of water in the palm of my hand, and then I'll dry all three of the panels and use them to die cut my images. So the blue panel, you can see that I die cut some of the um, middle layers, so this is kind of like the center of the flower, and I die cut that from the blue. And then for my second flower, I die cut it from one of the more teal-like sections. So this has multiple layers. You have the solid layer, you have two center pieces, you have the outline, and then finally you have the pistols. It would be really pretty on those center pieces that I just added if you wanted to add some dimension with the foam tape, but I am going to create the parrot and I wanted to make sure that they were going to tuck nicely behind him. So I'm just showing you the quick assembly. This flower has a solid outline. The second flower has, it comes in two pieces. It's easy peasy to figure out which way those outline pieces go. And for the centers, I just eyed where I thought that it looked the best. So I don't think there's any right or wrong way that you can add those center layers. Definitely the outlines, obviously, are going to be directional, and it's going to matter where you place those. So here is the second one. And then I'm going to bring in a couple of yellows for me to create the pistols. So I wanted another contrasting color on here. You could certainly go with a black or even a white if you wanted to, to keep it a little bit more subtle. But I wanted to add a little bit of uh, a pop of yellow to this. And so I'm going to use a couple more magical colors and I will have those listed up on the screen as I use them. I have a piece of accent opaque cardstock. This first one is teeny weeny bikini. I've added water to my cardstock and I'm just sprinkling that on directly to the paper. I'll spritz it with a little bit more water to get that to move and then I'll dry in between. Next I'm going to add a little bit of this. Um, I had the color up on the screen. I can't remember what the yellow, yellow tail or something like that, yellow. And this time I'm just going to dip it into the ink that's on my mat. I die cut the pistols off camera and attach them to my hibiscus and now we are using some I think it's petticoat purple I did have the color up on the screen I'm going to start coloring my parrot if you have ever googled parrots they come in a beautiful wide variety of colors I found one that had a really intense or a dark purple on the wings it had more of a pinky purple on the head and the tail and then it had a vibrant blue on the body so that was my inspiration for this one this time I'm using a different method I am using the magical that is on my mat and I am just painting it directly onto this accent opaque cardstock. So again, this is the 80 pound accent opaque and I have very little water on my brush. I'm not using a whole lot of water with this process because as I mentioned, I really want that deep purple. So we have our base layer and then it's really easy to layer all of the pieces on top. So I have the main section of the wing and then I have the bottom portion uh, that's going to be the tip. I'm going to add a little variation in that purple for another area on that wing and that's going to just give me a variety of color because um, typically it's not going to be perfect. I'm going around the edges because when I do add the foam tape to this wing I want to make sure it's not going to show underneath and around the sides so I don't want that white showing. I'm coming back in with that Naneka's purple popsicle and a little bit of the umbrella drink pink and again this is going to create more of a fuchsia purple um, for my bird. I'll mix the two colors together spritz it with a little bit of water and I'm adding a little bit of the a little bit more of that purple to it so here we are we're gonna start painting the tail feathers and the head with this color combination and then we will use it to paint directly to some of the layering pieces 
As I mentioned, these are products that Scrappy Tail Crafts released last year. They are absolutely beautiful. I have a video for the cockatoo, which I thought was another beautiful layered bird. I will link that up in the description box, or not the description box, I'm sorry. I'll link that at the end of this video if you're interested in seeing the tutorial for that card. Uh, for that one, I think I did ink blending. It's been a while. Again, I did create with that one last year, but the tropical release from Scrappy Tail Crafts was absolutely amazing, and there were so many beautiful pieces that went along with that, and as I was looking through my stash, trying to figure out where I wanted to, what direction I wanted to go for my next video, I saw these dies, and I thought I had to use them. You can see how much lighter that purple is because I did add that umbrella drink pink and it's softening up the bird a little bit. The blue that I'm going to bring in is from another pack and it is called Banff Blue. I think it's from like the um, Northern Lights collection maybe. I will link each of the collections in the description box below of the magicals that I'm using. These magicals have a very intense shimmer especially when you're painting them directly to paper so you're, you'll see in my final photos that there is a lot of intense sparkle on this parrot as opposed to it being a little bit more subtle when I did the ink smushing on the um, hibiscus flowers. So here's that Banff blue and I'm sorry that it's a little bit off screen but I really wanted to focus in on the bird. Again I'm just adding that um, color. I added it to my glass mat. I spritzed it with a little bit of water and then I'm just painting it on. I didn't add any water to the parrot to the chest I made sure that uh, it was dry and so I was going wet to dry. We're going to start assembling it. I didn't show but I did use another brown magical color to color up the twig. That's the first piece that you want to put on when you are layering this parrot. There was one piece you can see that is uncolored and I was unsure where that piece went to. I didn't think it was very um, important for me to add it so I went ahead and just left it off. For the beak and the feet for this parrot I did use another gray tone from I think it's from the steampunk collection just a very light amount because when I was googling these birds I did see that their feet were gray so I went ahead and just added another gray magical. So I shared in this video three different ways to use the mag magicals. You can um, obviously do the ink smushing technique. I painted direct to paper and then I used it in a third way by adding it directly to my card panel and then spritzing the panel with water to get that movement. So these magicals are really versatile. If you really want an intense color you're going to do the painting like I'm doing right here. I'm just touching up a couple of the areas. If you want something a little bit more light, you're going to add the ink to your mat or add the pigment to your mat, spritz it with more water, and then uh, wet your paper. That will give you a lighter application. If you want a little bit more intensity, then uh, on your panels, then you can certainly just add it to your mat spritz it with water, take a dry panel and splatter it down and that's going to give you more intense color. So there is a way that you can control these magicals which is what I really enjoy about using them. We're going to finish off with some of these tail feathers. As I mentioned, it's beautiful. Uh, lots of dimension on this without any adding any foam tape. I did add foam tape to the wing though because I did want that to stick up just a little bit. And then these little tail feathers, as you can see, they're a little bit thin. So I just kind of curled them with my hands to make sure that they weren't laying flat. If you wanted them laying flat, then you would glue the whole thing down, but I am just gluing the upper portion of the tail feather and then letting it float freely towards the bottom.
Isn't that pretty? I just think it's so pretty. Once I finish with this, we are going to start assembling our card. I added a white card panel that was cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then from the same accent opaque cardstock, the white cardstock, I used the A2 triangle pattern cover plate to cut out my um, plate to make sure that I had that beautiful layer underneath. So I liked, because I have all this vibrant color, I did like having that additional white underneath, which really puts the focus more on my images than on my background for this card. I'm going to do a little bit more spattering with the water, and then I'll add this final wing. And as I mentioned, we're moving on. Isn't that pretty? Look at the dimension on that wing. Just a little bit of dimension there. The tail feathers curling. I think that it just gives it such beautiful movement for your card. All right. Now I am going to attach this panel to an A2 top folding card base. You certainly could have added this layer from the A2 Tropical Pattern Cover directly to your card panel. I wasn't sure if I was going to add a colored layer underneath, but once I got the bird down, I really um, liked the white on white without anything distracting, as I mentioned, from the bird and the flowers. So there are my completed flowers. I'm going to lay them underneath. I did add a little bit of stickles to the pistols on both of those hibiscus flowers. I like that placement, so I'll just lift them up, add my wet glue to the bottom of them, making sure you can see that I'm trying to add the tail feather. I'm just trying to um, snuggle up my little bird in that die cut where there's a natural separation between the petals. And there we go, I like that placement. I'll just lift up the head and use my reverse tweezers to hold, it in, hold the chest in place and then I'll do the same thing with the head. I just use my reverse tweezers to hold that in place. Because it's in the middle of my card, it um, you can see my tweezers are barely reaching right there, but it held it enough that I was able to get the glue to stick down. All right, so off camera to save a little bit of time, I used that Banff Blue and I colored up these leaves from the Tropical Leaves die set. And then I used the blue, very watered down, and added a little bit of the Dipito Teal to the palm frond. And once I get all of this tucked, I die cut from that yellow cardstock that I used for the pistols. I die cut the word high. And I, I'm going to show it far apart right here, but I do end up moving that H over because I thought it was a little bit too close to the bird. And once I finish with that, I'm going to add the finishing touches with some diamond stickles. As I mentioned, I added the diamond stickles to the pistols. And I wanted to go with the yellow for the word high because I thought that it tied in those pistols a little bit better with the card. I'm going to add some stickles to the centers of the flowers. And that will complete my magically delicious tropical card today. I'm so glad that you joined me. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. I hope that you take a look at the Scrap Details release. I will have all of the products listed in the description box below. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for watching.